Anyone who shoots lots of digital photographs knows what a hassle it can be to organize and then try to find particular photos when you have so many. Well, there's one man who's figured this all out, and that's Peter Krogh. And he is my special guest on this episode of The Fix. I'm Jan Kabili, your host for The Fix, and I was honored to sit with Peter Krogh to see how he uses keywords and collections to organize his Lightroom library and how he uploads photos directly from Lightroom to Facebook. You may know Peter Krogh as the author of the infamous DAM book, the Digital Asset Management book. He is a great author, and he's also a lecturer, and he's a darn good photographer, too. Let's jump in and talk to Peter Krogh. Hi, Peter. Hey, Jan. Great to uh, be with you, and congratulations on the new show. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you're one of our very first guests. You know, I've always been in awe of you because you figured out something that a lot of people don't know, and that is not just how to take great photos, but then how to organize them and manage them. It's really a problem for photographers, don't you think? Well, it is, and digital photography has only made that worse, and as the cameras get better and faster and the more megapixels, it becomes even more important to, uh, to really have an understanding of how all the pieces fit together. So I understand that you have a kind of a book empire now where you're publishing all kinds of books on this subject of organizing and managing photos. What is that? Where do people find that? Well, we have a uh, website called thedambook.com, and the the publishing venture really started with the books that I wrote originally for O'Reilly, a uh, wonderful publisher, great relationship for me. And uh, starting in the middle of last year, we decided that we really needed to begin releasing these on our own. And so I've done two books under that banner. We've done, we're also distributing uh, books by the great Victoria Bampton, the Lightroom Queen. And um, actually, last week, we published the first printed book that is uh, not mine, that's being published by our company, Damn Useful Publishing. Terrific, it's, terrific. It, what what it, book is that? It's called Open Roads, Open Minds, and it's a uh, um, an exploration of creative problem solving by the guy who was my mentor when I first started in the uh, world of photography back in the 80s, a guy named Steve Uzell. And I'm, I'm just as thrilled as I can be that, that we're able to publish that. Well, that's really exciting. And there are also some great books. You, people may have heard of The Damn Book, which was your first book. Damn is not a swear word. <laughs> it that's means, correct. What does it mean? You can tell Digital us. asset management. <laughs> Right, a fancy word for keeping track of all your millions of photos, right? Yes, and, and as a matter of fact, that, that's a great lead into the uh, most recent book, which is, is called Organizing Your Photos, because we really wanted to, to kind of take the, um, the super technical part of it um, to, to lay that back as much as we could and make it really friendly for the average photographer and, and try and you know, not use big words, but, um, but really give people a great foundation and an understanding of how all the parts fit together. And it really does do that. I'm one of your customers. I downloaded that book. And what's great about these books, they're not just to read or even to read online. They also have multimedia components. So after you read what Peter has to say, then you can click on a little video and he gives you examples and, and talks about it and shows you what he was writing about. And I think that's so great, Peter, because one thing I've found as a trainer and instructor and author is people learn in different ways, right? Yeah, they do. And and. I really believe that um, the process of teaching somebody workflow is really assisted by seeing it in action. You know, most photographers I know would much rather have you sitting there next to them and they'd like to look over your shoulder as you do something. And with these books, we're able to do that. And, you know, I, I think the whole world of, of media and communication is opening up for people who understand photography, who understand storytelling, um, visual communication and design. And, and yes, it's, it's kind of a rough and scary patch, but it's also um, just an amazing world of opportunity for people who understand visual communication. Yeah, it is. And we're going to have to talk some more, I'm telling you, because I'm very interested in many of the things that you figured out about book publishing in this new age. So I'll be picking your brain some more on that. Please but do. I will. But today, um, I understand that you're going to be sharing your screen and showing us some Lightroom tips and techniques. What do you have in mind? Give us a little teaser of what you'll be showing later in the show. 
Well, we have, um, I think one of the things that's most important when people are looking at um, trying to organize their pictures is to understand the difference between using keywords to group images by subject matter and how you use collections in Lightroom. And one of the things I can show you pretty quickly is that as Lightroom was being designed and developed, the collections were really the place that they expected you to do the organizational work, to do the, that sort of important creative work of putting pictures together in an interesting way. And I think that's an interesting point. I hope everybody heard that, that the guys who made Lightroom, and the women, I hope, <laughs> yes. expe expected some, you... Some very smart women on that team. Yeah. They expected you to use collections, not folders, not necessarily keywords or other organizing features as the main way to organize and keep track of your photos. That's your point. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and then I have uh, a little candy also to, to add at the end, which is how you can use published services to upload your photos straight out of Lightroom to Facebook and actually even bring the comments back into Lightroom, which makes it a neat way to centralize the, the photographic work and the communication you're doing with other people. Oh, that'll be Facebook. fun to learn. Yeah. That'll be great. Well, before you share your screen and show us the video portion of your um, of the show, maybe you can give a little candy to our audio listeners, because we do have some people who are not on video who are listening to this podcast. Can you talk a little bit about collections, keywords, and the difference between them, what you think their purposes are and how you might use them to best advantage? Yeah. So the uh, keywords really are a wonderful tool for filtering your photos down to a particular um, subject matter of image. So if you, if you have a shoot, this is an easy thing to do. If you have a shoot, you can put a keyword on the entire shoot. And if you know a month later, a year later, 10 years later, I know I went to Jamaica and I'd like to see those pictures. So that, that keyword can let you get back to them really easily. So those, that's, a, that's a very easy um, tool to help you find pictures and filter down to those pictures. And you can also use keywords for specific subject matter, like, you know, ocean, building, tree, dog. I typically don't tend to use those. I, I don't want to spend any more time keywording than, than, uh, than I absolutely have to. And so... I tend to use keywords for stuff that's important to me. You know, my, my family members, um, I use it to basically keep track of, of jobs. I use uh, other metadata tags, uh, like in, in the same way to keep track of locations where I shoot. And, but, but I'm not trying to um, build collections of images with keywords. It's really just for me to be able to go find them quickly. And, and I keep that in mind. That's interesting because I know that some people um, uh, offer for sale on the, on the Internet these hierarchies of keywords. So you could get like every kind of mammal or bird put into this really complicated, deep hierarchy. And I urge people not to do that when I teach because really they don't need all of those different words. They need just the words that are meaningful to them. Because And what I tell people to do is think about what word would you search on if you were looking for a particular bunch of photos that you took. And use that as your keyword, not every single word in the dictionary. It's not an exercise in, in some, kind of liter some kind of dictionary exercise or encyclopedia exercise. Well, you know, it, it's uh, an individual thing. I certainly know people who are most comfortable with the idea that they have classified every possible thing in their photos. And, and that's just the way their brain works, and they like to do that, and that's great. And I'm not going to tell them to do it any other way. But, um, but yeah, for, for most people, a pre-configured keyword list isn't going to be terribly useful um, unless you happen to be just, you know, shooting every single animal at the zoo um, or something like that. You, you don't need most of the you know, animal names or you don't need most of the place names. And so, so I would say the vast majority of the important keywords for me are names of people I know, events I've been to, clients I have, assignments I did for those clients. And those will never appear in a purchased keyword list. That's true. I kind of think of it like who, what, 
where, when. You know, that's easy for me to remember as categories and then to, to always try to stay within those categories rather than pulling out really esoteric words for keywording. Yeah. And I now I would say that if you're making something available for stock photography or you really want it to be found on the web for some reason, then adding keywords, adding a, you know, a lot of keywords, um, if, as long as they're relevant, can be an important tool. But for most people, that's not most of their pictures. For most people, it's really about how do I find them or how does somebody in my family find them. And two or three or four keywords typically is enough to, to at least narrow down to that group that, that you're looking for. Now, what about collections? They're different than keywords, both in terms of the way they work and what you might use them for, no? Yeah, they are. And and really, um, you know, one of the, the most uh, clear ways to see that, that Lightroom intends you to use collections is that there are collections, um, that, that Lightroom is intending you to use collections to organize your pictures and to, to make cool stuff with them, is that there are collections for specific um, types of books, slideshow, web, um, and or prints. And, and so you can see that they've put this tool in there very specifically to say, if you're making a book, use a collection. You can't see the keywords when you're in the book module, but you can see the collections uh, area. And, and so really what they've done there is... is um, is created a tool that, where they expect you to put images together in useful and creative ways. And it includes the ability to, to have sequencing. And as we know in any kind of storytelling, the sequencing is extremely important. If you have 30 images that tell the story of your vacation or your kids growing up or somebody's wedding or you know whatever it is, it's extremely important to have the sequencing um, be a part of the editing process. And collections is the place you can do that. You can't do that in keywords. That's right. So in a collection, you can just drag photos around and put them in any order that you want. And you can't necessarily do that when you're looking at photos in other ways in Lightroom, like in folders, for example. Right. And so there's some ability to do that, but but they really are expecting you to do it in collections. And that's where you can you can really experiment around. You know, I, one of the things I like to say is that that the storage of your stuff should be nice and neat and orderly, but the creative process is messy, and you need a place to be able to make a mess. And <laughs> and so collections gives you the ability to put stuff together, try it out. Oh, I didn't like that so much, but let me try a variation of that. Um, and you can do that without moving your pictures all around into different folders or making duplicates of pictures. You just make a new collection and try a new way to tell the story until you get it right. Right, because when you move photos into collections, you're not actually moving them on your hard drive. You're just kind of virtually putting them together. So collections really are brilliant. And I know you showed me in the past how you use collections. I don't know if we'll have time to do that today. Maybe you're going to come back and show us more about collections in the future, I would hope. Um, but for now, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and show us some of the other great Lightroom tutorials that you've put together for the show. Sure. Let's set that up here. Share screen. And let's move into Lightroom. Okay. So I think the best way to show what I mean about uh, how keywords can be used is to actually go into my keyword panel and show you how I've how I've got things organized. And I'm going to close the histogram just so we get a little bit more room here. And you can see that I've got a set of top level collection or keywords here. And um, when you turn a keyword down, you can see any keywords that happen to be inside that keyword. So keywords have the ability for you to organize the, uh, the keywords kind of like folders are, but they're not folders because any image can have multiple keywords. You can select an image, and if you want to see what keywords are associated with it, um, we can go into the uh, keywording panel. 
Now I'm working without a net because I have no idea what keywords are actually in here. Um, uh, but there's a whole bunch of them in these because some of these are kind of older, uh, older images. Um, so keyword, the keyword list is the place I like to do my work. And I, I set these keywords up in a hierarchy. So every time I do an assignment, I make a new keyword inside of uh, the jobs area for the client. And then it, as I do more and more assignments for the client, I may end up with more and more keywords inside it. So PBS is one of my clients, and Be Inspired is an ad campaign that I've been uh, working on for them. And I've just keyworded the images from each of the different shoots that will let me go find those pictures really easily with just a single click. And this is kind of showing me the whole raw shoot, but it makes it extremely easy to find. Now, this isn't particularly useful in terms of storytelling or making deliverables, but it, is, it does make it easy to find. And I think another thing that's, that's really um, intuitive for photographers to understand is that you could make a keyword called events and then a keyword called family, let's say, and, and you could have images from different family events and keyword those. Just add that keyword to the whole shoot. Stuff shot on the July 4th. There's all the pictures. Makes it really easy to find those images. Okay, so I think you get the idea of how you can start to use keywords. And, you know, of course, one of the nice things is you can change these really easily. So if we right click and edit it, if I decide this needs a new name, I can change that and just change it and there it is it changes it and you can also drag this around if I want to put this inside people now that's now inside people so you can reorganize this in any way that's useful to you so a, a really nice quick way to find images according to subject matter if you can just do some basic tagging to them now let's go over to the collections panel and we also have something that looks kind of like a set of folders over here um, but these are a, a different kind of metadata, and that is collections. So you can you see that they have a, this kind of shoebox icon um, that they've made for collections, and that shoebox is actually a collection set. And then inside the collection set, you can have actual collections, and this is the icon for the collection itself. That me just means a group of images. And when you select it, you see any of the images that are in that group. So um, I'm going to open this up a little bit more so we have a little more room here. Uh, let me show you a couple of things. So number one, there are different types of collections. And we can see that right here in this. I've made a, a little group. I actually use collections to help me make my demos about collections. It's kind of meta right there. <laughs> um, so, so this icon means web gallery. And when I click this little arrow, it's actually going to uh, move me over into the web gallery, into the web module, and bring those images up. When I click this one that's a, a book icon, it's going to bring me over into the book module and show me the images with all the pages there. Or in the print module, it's going to, this is a, a print collection and slideshow. So you can actually see that, that they've really, they really do expect you to do this kind of um, organizational work in the collection area. And that's why they've, they've created these different collection types. When you're in a module like slideshow to make a new collection, you simply go here and you see, oh, look, I can make a slideshow right here. So they've, they've made it. Um, easy for you to do that. And, and when you're in the slideshow module, you can only make a slideshow. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and so I do a lot of organization in the collections area. Let's, let's go and take a look at a, a project that I've got that's got some pretty deep collections. So here in jobs, I have jobs in progress, and I have this work I've been doing for this African nonprofit. And I've made a, a bunch of different types of collections. So when I've sent stuff out in blog posts from the field, I just made collections so I'd remember which images I'd sent out. When I did um, 
some books to help tell their story. I was creating books in the uh, book module and saving those as collections. When I did um, other kinds of projects here, like, yeah, we needed images for the annual report. We needed a different set of images for their brochure. Different set of images were uploaded to their Flickr account. So um, all of these are different groupings of the same, I think there's about four or 5,000, maybe 9,000 images in this group. There's a lot of pictures in there, but this small group that we, that I make here of, you know, and put into collections are, are really the highest value on the whole project. So if I were to try to think about a way to say this in general, would it be fair to say that one good use of collections is for different projects that you're doing, as opposed to keywords, which might be, I think of more as subject matter tags. You got it. That okay. is exactly it. It's it's really about putting things together in useful ways in, in project form. And you can I also use it to manage my workflow. So when I do a shoot, I'll use collections to um, uh, to narrow the pictures down, to remember what I've sent out to my client, to keep a record of which ones they've selected. Terrific. And, and I do that same thing yeah, in here. So that's... Uh, uh, this is a really useful place to do this kind of work. You can make collections really easy. They take up essentially zero room. If I want to say, you know, new project, I can make it. I'll put it inside there. It's going to come in as a blank thing. So let's say I was doing a new project for this this group. One of the first things I do is go look for the pictures that I thought were good that I've used before. Let's close that panel and say, oh, well, maybe, you know, that one would be useful for my new project and, and maybe uh, that one would be useful for the new project and look through here and, you know, maybe that one would be useful. So if I bring those together, I've brought them together in a way that lets me find them easily, but I haven't moved them out of where they were. And I can have as many of these as I want and I can name these whatever I want to name them. So... Um, you know, if this is really uh, images for video, I can, can name that collection. And over time, the work that you do to put your pictures together in these kinds of groups adds a huge amount of value to them because it lets you find the pictures when you need to find them. It, almost certainly the pictures that you have someplace are the ones that are most valuable. And you can even see here, if we right-click on this and I see Go to Collection, you can see all the different collections that this image is in. Oh, I didn't know about that. That's yeah, a great this, thing to see. It's a pretty cool thing because you can go find the, the actual, you know, you can, can use that to find the actual collection you put it in. That is and, great. And, but, you know, one thing about yeah. collections, though, I find some people, I think, make too many collections. Yeah. And so they end up with this huge, huge, huge list, and then that becomes unwieldy in itself. What do you suggest to do about that? Well, so that's where these collection sets are useful. And a collection set is, you know, just a, a really a, a thing that holds collections. So I create a collection set, and I can, um, I'm going to call this trash me, so I remember to throw it away at the end. Um, and I'm going to just keep it on the top level. And, and so you can make a collection set. And if I found, you know, if it was, if I realized that, oh, well, you know what, I really need to put um, uh, portfolios and personal work and other people's stuff inside this because I want to make this a neater hierarchy here. I just do that. I can just move them on in. Well, don't trash them all. Don't trash those collections. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm actually going to move them all <laughs> good, right good. Move them out. So, and uh, let's okay. see if we can make it go back to where it needs to be. It's a little fiddly to find the spot in between. I know it is. Um, you know, I wanted anyway, to tell yeah. you, we have, we have about five yeah. minutes left. Okay. If you want to wrap up with some other neat yeah, thing to let's, show us. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll fix that later. Um, so, <laughs> I want to talk about how we can use published services. One of my favorite parts of Lightroom that's very underappreciated to help help you manage how you send your pictures out. I, I use Photo Shelter to deliver my jobs, but I also use Facebook 
to send pictures out for family and friends. So this is a this is a demo catalog. So this doesn't um, you know have all the pictures I've sent out, but it, there's enough for us to take a look at it here. Um, I've made some albums in Facebook, and you you make that in the published services. Um, you can set it up um, essentially by going into the publishing manager. Uh, I'm not going to work through that because we don't really have time. I want to show you why you would care first. Um, so you could make a, a published gallery, and then you actually can link to it right up here. And when you link to it, it's going to pull that up in Facebook, and it's going to be um, linked to that particular gallery. So these images, which were uploaded straight from Lightroom, are in my Facebook uh, family photos gallery. Let's go back into Lightroom. Now one of the cool things about that is that it can actually give you the ability to bring comments back in. So just earlier today, I uploaded this picture I shot in Rome. Wow. And yeah, it was uh, nice to have someone doing your lighting for you. Um, <laughs> the big guy, right? The big girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I published that, uh, you know, two hours ago, and I immediately got a comment from my my old editor at O'Reilly, Colleen Wheeler. I know um, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now if I hit this little button here, it's going to go out to Facebook and it's going to grab any fresh comments and likes and update it. So let's do that. And turns out in the last hour, there's 13 people who have liked the photo. And, and so I'm actually having this dialogue with Colleen. Um, and, and this is going back and forth here. And I can actually say, um, Colleen, choose your deity. <laughs> And that ends up going up to Facebook. And so you can actually have that interchange right within Lightroom, which I think is really cool. That's fantastic. And uh, let me show you how that works. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you, too. Let's go look at this one. I hit tap G to go to the grid. So then I have the ability to click straight onto that. One of the things that I don't like about Facebook is that it does not give you caption information. And so it, it removes your photo credit and any captions that you want to put in the picture. And you can set Lightroom up to actually watermark and give you caption information right on the photo that you upload. So um, I'll show you how we do that. Oh, fantastic. I'd love to see that. So the way I've got this set up, if we go into the... Um, settings here is that I have told Lightroom to put a watermark on. And this watermark is called Facebook Watermark Caption. That's just what I named it. And when I go in here and edit the watermarks, I have the ability to make this say whatever I want. So I, I just added that right as I was about to upload. Now, one of the things that's cool in Lightroom is that there's an, another way you can do almost anything, and you can actually get to that right up here without having to go into the export dialog, and this will let you edit your watermarks. So I'm going to show you how we put that all together. So let's say I want to add a new photo to upload. I'm going to go find the photo, and, and I've, I'm using my, um, uh, my collections to make it easy to find photos. And I've got a photo of my friend Darren and his daughter, Chloe. And I'm going to add that to the friends um, gallery. So here that is. And once I've dropped it in, Lightroom knows I've already uploaded this one. And it's telling me, oh, look, you have a new one that you'd like to, that you might want to update. Um, let me just do that. Okay. Um, so I want to put a caption on here. So what I'm going to do is just go up to here in the Lightroom menu, go to Edit Watermarks, 
find my Facebook watermark, and I'm going to now write Darren and Chloe. And that's going to be the new watermark, and you can see what how that's going to preview. And I'm going to hit Update preset Facebook watermark and now when I update that when I when I publish this out to Facebook it's going to put that watermark on it so all I have to do to publish it is hit the publish button it's going to sign into uh, Facebook and it's not wanting to do the old one but it will do the new one which is good so then you have to go back and delete the old one from Facebook well um, I that's think what so. I thought I was doing here was saying uh, uh, mark as re as published, but um, maybe I maybe I went through that too fast. Let's uh, let's go look at it, and so I go into this, and then the image is uploaded with its caption in a watermark form. Oh, I see. So you know what I thought, Peter, is that Facebook wasn't smart enough to be able to replace the first version of your photo it, with the not. second. Yeah, it's not. And the one it was complaining about was actually this one, the one I had uploaded. Oh, it was. Previously. Okay, got it. So that's what it was really complaining about. Um, anytime you make a change to this, so if I go in and do any any kind of work on, in the develop module, then it's going to say this has been modified. Do you want to, um, you know, do you want to republish this. So now when we go back in here, you see it's modified photos to republish. What should work is that we right click on that and say we mark it as up to date. And I don't know what Lightroom's being a little buggy right here, but this should be dropped into the other bucket as being up to date. Um, don't know why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Well, but, it's okay, uh, but we get but, the idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so once we've got it up there, now I can hit this and see, you know, who knows how fast comments will come in. But um, as comments come in, you can go ask for them real time. Using That's fantastic. Well, I wish you would have time to show us even more because I know there are new expanded commenting and liking features between Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom on the web that just came out two days ago with, uh, well, we're now recording in November uh, with the release of Lightroom 5.7. Yes. Um, so there's always more and more and more. Uh, Lightroom is a really deep program, but you know what I always tell people too? You don't have to know how to do every little trick in Lightroom. You need to find those things that help you in your workflow and concentrate on those, or at least start with those. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's there. there's so much in there that Almost nobody, except maybe Victoria, knows what mm. every little thing is. Right. And um, it's, you know, it's really about finding those things that are useful for you. And so um, I, I think, you know, get a good, clear idea of what you actually want to do. And, and then uh, and, and use these tools appropriately. I, it's, it's really a, a wonderful uh, collection of tools and in, in my view I it is absolutely the central hub for all of my photography oh me too I you know I've really come around to it and by the way I'm waving at Michael Michael Allen does that yeah. say it Michael Olin yes <laughs> I was in trouble with his name hi Michael you, you said it right the second time the Olin Olin um, yeah <laughs> So thank you so much, Peter. I know that you're very busy and um, you have to run off to some other engagements, but I do want to uh, make sure that you know how much we appreciate you showing us some great tips and sharing your great knowledge with us. And I want to make sure that people know where they can go to get your books. I mean, these are truly books that I recommend. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're going to just buy one or two Lightroom books at all, go to this website, which you're going to tell us now and get these books. Yeah, thedambook.com. And if you go here, there's the damn bookshop. And um, I really think for, for any Lightroom user, and I've heard from very sophisticated Lightroom users down to novices that this has helped them. Um, the Organizing Your Photos with Lightroom 5 multimedia book is one that we're just getting really rave reviews about. And it's available in a bunch of different formats. Play it on your computer, your iPad, DVD delivery and an actual paper copy book as well. Wow, so, and even DVDs. I thought they were 
dinosaurs already. <laughs> well, there's so many movies. It's it's uh, four gigabytes of movies. Oh. So it's for some people, it's a little more convenient to deliver. So it's not really a DVD, but it's <laughs> um, it's it's a more convenient way for some people. Terrific. Well, I love talking to you again. I hope to see more of you here on The Fix and elsewhere. And I want to remind everybody out there in uh, Internet land to please tune in next week where we're going to have another great episode of The Fix here on This Week in Photo.com Network. Jan, thanks so much for having me. I'll look forward to coming back again. All right, then. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Fix and that you'll try out some of the techniques for organizing and sharing your photos from Lightroom that you learned here. If you want to catch more episodes of The Fix, jump over to thisweekinphoto.com and be sure to use my link to subscribe to TWIP so that you can enjoy the many member benefits of being part of the TWIP network. Tune in next week for another exciting episode of The Fix.